Hi, hello, how are you? Today we'll be steering from fall and Halloween because even though Halloween is now right around the corner, I am unfortunately running out of time to do a lot of my Halloween projects. There is quite a few that like, I just won't have time for. And I think when it comes to fall, there'll be like two, maybe three more coming out very soon. But for now, we're gonna jump into winter slash Christmas. Um, this year I will be making a lot of Christmas gift ideas as well as just like fun, cute, wintry crochet items. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely stay tuned because I have a lot coming here and I'm very excited to make them all. Now for our project today, I am personally using the Lion brand Go For Fleece Sherpa. This is the color cream. I love this. This isn't very easy to work with. So if you've never done like fluffy yarn, this definitely is not a good starting point because it's very hard to see your stitches, but it is very nice when it's come together. So we'll be needing this, or I'm using this for my snowflake. You can use whatever yarn you like. And then to go with that, I'm using an eight millimeter hook so I can have nice tight stitches because I think this recommends a 15 millimeter, which eight millimeter works, I promise. I already made the snowflake. I have not completed it, but I've already mostly made it so I can tell without a doubt this size works. You will also need a stitch marker as well as a crochet needle. And then optional would be acrylic yarn for the legs as well as the right hook size for the acrylic you use because obviously there is different sizes. So that's optional, but you definitely need your main yarn for the actual snowflake and the hook and everything. But let's just go ahead and get started. To start our snowflake, you're gonna do your magic ring or like I like to do. I do four starting four stitches in a starting chain. Then I go into the first stitch and pull my yarn all the way through, creating a magic ring. Then I'm going to put one stitch, which do this yarn. I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Normally I don't mark my first stitch, but this yarn is definitely a lot harder to see. And two, three, and this is all into that uh, center piece right here. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I did eight stitches into the center. Now we are going to remove our thing here, go into our first stitch. This is what I really count as round one, but it's up to you if you want to count the eight stitches as your, I guess eight stitches is round one. This is round two. So I'm going to go back into that same stitch, pull my yarn through. So I have two stitches into one, then do that again, two stitches into the next one, two stitches into the next one. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So my second round will be 16. All right, I'm trying something new. I'm currently sitting on my couch with my tripod. So we'll see if this works, but for round three, I'm going to remove our stitch marker. We're going to go into our first stitch, pull our yarn through, that's stitch one. Then we're going to go back into that first stitch again, oops, back into that stitch again for a second one. Sorry for the shaking and then go into the next stitch and only put a single stitch. Then go into the next stitch and put two stitches into it. I know it's moving, I'm sorry. And then the next stitch, a single stitch. 
and we're gonna do that all the way around all right hopefully it won't move as much now but for the next round we are going to go into our first stitch pull our yarn through mark it and go back into that stitch then we're going to do one two but let me close this so we don't lose our spot because I 100% won't find it again in this yarn. Then we'll go into the next stitch and double it up. So go back in. Then one, two. And then we're going to double it up and go one, two, double it up, one, two, all the way back to the start. All right, here is kind of an overview of like the size that we're going for um, this time. We are just gonna do a single stitch in every single stitch all the way around to kind of get a little bit of a dimension and then we're gonna start reducing because I do, I have a hard time making small little plush and I'm trying to work on it. This is still gonna be, I would say, a little bit more like schmedium, but I'm working on making smaller ones. So this is my attempt. But yeah, so next round, we'll just do a single stitch in every stitch all the way around. Before continuing on, I went ahead and added two eyes for our little snowflake friend. I am going to add this smile, but not quite yet. I used 12 millimeter eyes. So yeah, now we are going to reduce. So I'm basically going to do the reverse of my expanding. I'm going to do weave. I'm going to get my tripod set off set up but I'm gonna do two stitches into a single stitch then one two then two stitches into a single stitch one two all the way around I'm hoping the camera won't shake too much or fall over so to reduce we're going to go into our first stitch then into our second stitch and pull the yarn through making one single stitch out of two this is falling over, I can't tell. And then we're going to go into the next stitch for a single stitch, then into the next stitch for a single stitch, then one more time just to show you guys before, oops, it helps if I don't skip a stitch. We'll pull through one stitch, then go into the next stitch, pull through again. So we'll have three loops on our yarn, then pull all the way through. As you can see, it's reducing, it's coming on the inside, so and we'll keep doing that. So we'll do one, two single stitches, and then reduce again and go all the way around. I am going to go ahead and add my smile here after that last round. Basically, when I do a smile a lot of times, I kind of line up to where the eyes, like the inside corner of the eyes, I do that. I think he looks kind of cute with this meh smile, but I will do the classic where I pull through and I'm basically just going to make his smile like very slight. I don't like the V smiles very much, but the technique for the V smiles is very useful. I think you can always adjust it a little bit. Typically with mine, I just pull mine down ever so slightly, giving him just a little a little smile it normally helps with that like drastic v look but yes that is what he'll look like once i fix his mouth i also added little cheeks you can't really see them like the little dimple look love that i just think it's so cute anyways we're gonna keep reducing and we're gonna keep following the pattern opposite of when we were expanding so we're going to go weave into the first stitch, into the second stitch, then pull through for a single stitch like the previous. Then we'll do one single stitch, then pull through the two stitches for one, then one, then pull through the two for one, all the way around. I'm going to torment myself by not stuffing the snowflake right now. And I'm going to do two stitches into one, turn two stitches into one. So weave into the first, weave into the second, pull through. For a single stitch weave into the next weave into the next pull through for a single stitch all the way around so i'm gonna do two stitches into one all the way around to the start all right so 
Now we're just going to weave in the yarn after stuffing. So I'm just going to weave back and forth, going in through this way, up and out and out, all the way around and then pull it tight. And now to finish off the body, so to speak, uh, I do have like a small hole left. I am just going to kind of like weave and tie it. And I'm going to leave my extra yarn loose. But then basically you have the body, if you can call it that, of your snowflake. We'll just have to add the pieces out. And I think I'm going to add two little legs because why not? That's cute. We have our little snowball head. <laughs> then I went ahead because I, when I do these videos, this is like the first time I'm making something. So I went ahead and kind of like workshopped how I'm going to do the like little, what, do, what are these called on a snowflake? The little, little spiky bits? I don't know. Anyways, like those things. Now I'm going to show you how I did it. And these are pretty simple. Um, I think there's, you could also, so when, when we attach them, they are probably going to be like a little floppy. So you could double up and weave them together to make it nice and stiff. But, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. Got a little fuzz in there. Okay. Anyways, so to start, I'm going to do a starting chain of six, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to flip my work and go the opposite way, doing five stitches up here. Maybe. If it'll let me, I'll do five. All right. Next, I'm going to do two stitches out. And then I'm going to go across the top. So I did two stitches. Let me kind of show you guys again. So it's a little clearer. Here is uh, after my fifth stitch in here, and then I'm just going to do one, two, then I'm going to flip my work and start going, kind of building like a top here. I'm going to do three, oop, maybe if I can get into the stitch, three, then four stitches basically across the top of it. I'm just gonna go into the center. And ta-da! That's all I did. I don't think it's like, by any means, the smartest technique. And then when I cut, I just loop my yarn through. Now, I clearly have not attached these yet, but I made these longer because one, if you want to double it up and make it stiff, where it'll stick straight out, you can do that. Or you can do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to basically use the base as kind of making it very, like, structured against the body. So, like, this is meant to be woven up against the body of the snowflake so it can stick out a little bit better, like so. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to weave all my pokey things on the snowflake. I, like I said, I don't know what they're called. And then we'll meet back up. And at that point, you can either be done or you can be like me and add his little legs. Okay, so I have attached the different little pieces for our snowflake. I will have to weave the ends in. But I recommend if you are not doing legs to do a sixth one here. If you do want to do them smaller, which I say at some point in all my videos, crochet is 
amazing because you can make it your own every time. If you don't like how big they are or if you don't think these are big enough, you can definitely resize them and use kind of the idea that I had expressed to you guys to make them your own. I clearly sewed them on crooked. So you can see this side was good and then this went a little crooked and then that was okay but then this was a little crooked but it's fine. I am going to weave the ends in and then make little legs. Also, look at my cat. How cute is that? Oop, I woke him up. I'm sorry. I'm sure people are going to yell at me, but sometimes you just got to pet him. He was like, leave me alone. I was comfy. For the leg, I did a starting chain of 10 and then I did two rows of single stitches, nine single stitches. And then I took one of my tails here, folded it in half, and weaved through. Hold on, hold on. So I folded it in half and weaved through the two, technically the two like outside ends, so like here and here. And then I have little legs. So I'm gonna do weave these in. And then I'm gonna stitch these on to our snowflake. All right, my snowflake is done. The poor thing, I stitched this one back way too far. So one does not match the other four. Kind of looks like he has like almost like a clown hairstyle. And then here's his little legs because I stitched all of like this one. These two slightly crooked, this one caused these to be crooked. His face is slightly crooked, so his legs are slightly crooked. He's a, he's a little special, but that's okay, you know? This is the first time I've made this. I think I've learned a lot, and I'll definitely be doing a part two where I kind of revamp and make him a little different, but here's his little legs, his little face. His eyes are a little too big, I think, as well. His one that's too far back. <laughs> But yeah, I, I make these for the first time with you guys and I like to show even the imperfections because that's a part of like making your own crochet projects when you're just going from scratch. But yeah, here is the finished result of the little snowflake friend. I don't know what I'm going to call him yet, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye!